Tigers, Miss Krieger and Smokey the Cat here for a brand new Tiger TV Specials Edition. Up first, here's a lesson from Coach. Hey guys, this is Coach. You may be bored at home. I understand that. I'm going to introduce you to the stair challenge. Alright. Behind me is my stairs at my apartment building. I'm going to see how many stairs I can do in a minute. Let's go. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-two, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, 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 thirty-four, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, forty. 32, 32, 32, 41, 42, 43, 44, 46, 47, 48, 49. Looks like 49 for me. Try your best. Thanks, Coach. Now, Senorita Caballero, take it away. Hola, mis alumnos de Barrett. Acá está Senorita Caballero. Hoy les voy a compartir un poema en español, ya que estamos en el mes de la poesía. El poema se llama Un desfile numeral por Carlos Reviejo. Con este desfile terminamos ya, marchando, deprisa, los números se van. Primero va el uno, que es el general, porque de los números es el manda más. El dos es un cabo. Y el tres, capitán. El cuatro... Y el cinco desfilan detrás. El seis con el siete no paran de hablar. El ocho está cojo y no puede andar. El nueve les dice más formalidad. Y el cero enfadado redondo se va. Ahora aquí está un repaso de los números del 1 al 10 hecho por mi sobrina Anabel. Los números. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 y 10. Y ahora quiero que encuentren cualquier número en sus casas y lo digan en español. Por ejemplo, 5, 12, 30, 6, 44. Hasta la próxima. Next, here's music with Mr. McCready. Hey friends, it's Mr. McCready here. Hope you're all doing well. So today we're going to play along to a song that most of us probably already know. And we're just going to have fun with it. We're going to use instruments that we find around our house. So for example, I took wooden spoons from my kitchen and I'm gonna use them as rhythm sticks. So the first part of our song, the A section, goes something like this. Sh ta sh ta sh ta sh ta. Here it is with the music. So now let's try the B section. Sh ti ti sh ta sh ti ti sh ta sh ti ti sh ta sh ti ti sh ta. Now let's play with the music. You guys are amazing. I miss you all. I can't wait to see you. And now, go ahead and tap along to some of your other favorite songs. Miss Aiken and I have been so impressed with all the artwork you've been making at home. 
My artist challenge for you this week is to recreate a work of art by taking a picture. You can use yourself, your pets, your parents, or everyday objects. All right, so my example was actually taken when I was a little sophomore in college. Some of you know I practice a Korean sword martial art, Heidong Gundo, and at the end of the semester we were taking club pictures, and we decided to take a silly one inspired by the 1851 painting George Washington Crossing the Delaware by Emanuel Loitz. So here are me and my friends recreating the artwork. Can you find little yellow belt Miss Krieger? I'm almost a black belt now. Anyway, let's look at some more examples of people recreating works of art. I've created a Wakelet page of artwork to inspire you. Follow the link in the video description to find it. Or you can find another work of art that you love to recreate. Make sure you share it with me or Mrs. Aiken on Seesaw or Twitter. We can't wait to see what you come up with. One last exciting art announcement for third, fourth, and fifth graders. Before we started distance learning, Mrs. Aiken and I were working with a WNL junior, Miss Sophia, who is going to guest teach you about photography. Miss Sophia is doing this project for the Girl Scouts Gold Award, which is a very special achievement. To help her, we are asking you to fill out a short survey that Mrs. Aiken and I will be sharing with you on Seesaw this week. It would mean a lot to Miss Sophia if you took this, and it would be a great way for you to welcome her to Barrett. So third, fourth, and fifth grade, look for this survey this week on me and Mrs. Aiken's Seesaw art page. Now, time for some artist shoutouts from last week's challenge. Keep making that amazing work, Barrett artists. Up next, here's Mr. Daddario. Hey, Barrett Tigers. One thing I'm missing is baseball. I'm a huge Washington Nationals fan. Go Nats. And I'm really excited that they won the World Series last year, but I can't watch them right now. So I thought to end Poetry Month, I would read to you a famous baseball poem called Casey at the Bat. Here it goes. Hope you enjoy. Casey at the Bat by Ernst Lawrence Thayer, read by Mr. Diderio. The outlook wasn't brilliant for the Mudville Nine that day. The score stood four to two with but one inning more to play. And then when Cooney died at first and Barrows did the same, a sickly silence fell upon the patrons of the game. A straggling few got up to go in deep despair. The rest clung to that hope which springs eternal in the human breast. They thought if only Casey could but get a whack at that, we'd put up even money now with Casey at the bat. But Flynn preceded Casey, as did also Jimmy Blake, and the former was a Lulu and the latter was a cake. So upon that stricken multitude grim melancholy sat, for there seemed but little chance of Casey's getting to the bat. But Flynn let drive a single to the wonderment of all. And Blake, the much despised, tore the cover off the ball. And when the dust had lifted and men saw what had occurred, there was Jimmy safe at second and Flynn a huggin' third. Then from 5,000 throats and more there rose a lusty yell. It rumbled through the valley, it rattled in the dell. It knocked upon the mountain and recoiled upon the flat, for Casey, mighty Casey, was advancing to the bat. There was ease in Casey's manner as he stepped into his place. There was pride in Casey's bearing and a smile on Casey's face. And when responding to the cheers, he lightly doffed his hat. No stranger in the crowd could doubt 
was Casey at the bat. 10,000 eyes were on him as he rubbed his hands with dirt. 5,000 tongues applauded when he wiped them on his shirt. Then while the writhing pitcher ground the ball into his hip, defiance gleamed in Casey's eye, a sneer curled Casey's lip. And now the leather-covered sphere came hurtling through the air, and Casey stood a-watching it in haunty grandeur there. Close by the sturdy batsman, the ball unheeded sped. That ain't my style, said Casey. Strike one, the umpire said. From the benches black with people, there went up a muffled roar. Like the beating of the storm waves on a stern and distant shore. Kill him! Kill the umpire! shouted someone on the stand. And it's likely they'd have killed him had not Casey raised his hand. With a smile of Christian charity, great Casey's visage sewn. He stilled the rising tumult. He bade the game go on. He signaled to the pitcher, and once more the spheroid flew. But Casey still ignored it, and the umpire said, Strike two! Fraud! cried the mountain thousands, and Echo answered, Fraud! But one scornful look from Casey, and the audience was awed. They saw his face grow stern and cold. They saw his muscles strain. And they knew that Casey wouldn't let that ball go by again. The sneer is gone from Casey's lip. His teeth are clenched in hate. He pounds with cruel violence his bat upon the plate. And now the pitcher holds the ball, and now he lets it go. And now the air is shattered by the force of Casey's blow. Oh, somewhere in this favored land, the sun is shining bright. The band is playing somewhere, and somewhere hearts are light. And somewhere men are laughing, and somewhere children shout. But there is no joy in Mudville. Mighty Casey has struck out. And that's the end of our poem. So I know uh, you guys are probably missing sports and doing other fun things with your friends, but uh, hopefully we'll be able to uh, look forward to the day when we can get out and we can go play baseball, we can go play other sports. And uh, even though Mighty Casey struck out, there's still hope for the future. Uh, I hope everyone is staying healthy and safe and we'll see you next week. All right, Barrett Tigers, that's it for this week's Tiger TV Special Edition. I really miss you guys, especially my fifth graders. You know I'm more of a behind-the-scenes editor type of person, and I had to anchor this week. Anyway, um, we love you, and we miss you, and I really hope I get to see you soon. Take care, and we'll see you all next week. Say bye, Smokey.